now uh, since we have the races replaced and uh, everything we need to actually uh, change out this wheel cylinder um, most of the time these things will be rusted shut so or rusted together so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these off and to do that you got to get these big springs off right here which are in themselves most of the time a big nightmare and a lot of times I can get them off with just needle nose but these are very very tough There you go, there's one. You gotta be real careful because these things will fly off and hit something. You can put your eye out. Pull this out a little bit. There we go. They probably make a special tool for this, but I'm too cheap to go buy it. There we go. All right, so they're done. And you take and separate these apart a little bit. And uh, pull this little piece out right here. If you can. For some reason it's being a little twerk. There we go. Okay, so now what you need to do is you need to crawl up underneath the trailer. There's two half inch bolts on the back side and you've got the brake line uh, that is a 3 8 so I'm gonna crawl back there see if I can get this and it's usually they never come off very easily so we're gonna find out <laughs> first things first is brake line and of, oh look at there it popped loose easy penetrating oil is your friend <laughs> wow that came off fairly easy Sure hope we're changing these for good reason and they're not good wheel cylinders. I'm just putting new ones on to put new ones on, an extra hundred dollars I didn't need to spend, but you know, hey. It always seems like these brake lines go on forever. They have threads that just don't quit. One thing I'm not seeing a ton of that I really expected was a bunch of rust. There we go. Brake line is out. Here's what I'm looking at. You can see here's our brake line right here. This little 3 8 it just unscrews. I mean, it's not terribly hard to get to. And then this little nut right here. This is, uh, there's two of them on either side. They're very, very hard to get to. Um, where's that half inch? There we are. What I'm trying to do is get my wrench down there to get that thing off, which is going to be a real fun one. But anyway, so there's two back here. You get them out, release this thing, and then this little piece right here is your bleeder screw, which we'll go over whenever we bleed the brakes. Now you notice that I had to take this shield off. Uh, it usually goes up right here. Um, the back side of this um, has two these two half-inch bolts I was telling you about. I couldn't get an open end or a socket on this from it being on here. You can see the kind of the shadow. It wouldn't allow the width of the socket to go on here. So we just instead took it off. We're gonna take this little cylinder out. Flip it back over. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> Water and nastiness. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. That my friends, that's why you change your wheel cylinders out. Look at that. It's nothing but mud and muck. Oh, yuck. And it's seized. So, it does not work. <laughs> so I'm glad we decided to go ahead and do that. And plus, this little rubber thing is cracked and nasty. So, all right, I'm going to go over and get the uh, new one, and we'll put it on. Now I went to put this new wheel cylinder on here, which you need to transfer the little actuator finger, which slips into this little rubber grommet here, uh, over to the new one. Um, is that when I, on this particular shield, this thing will not sit flush because this is a little too high. So what I'm doing is I got my little air grinder here, and uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to sand it down just a little bit. Now, yes, these are supposed to fit. 
but a lot of times things aren't manufactured the same way. It's aftermarket or something like that. Um, and also they are labeled right and left, so you need to make sure you get that correct. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it. Drops in like a champ. So we take our two little nuts in the back, or bolts in the back here. Throw them back in. By the way, it's February, I don't know, 20th or something. 82 degrees outside here in Dallas. Yeehaw, love it. So I'll take this little finger here, shove it into the little grommet, and make sure that it's lined up like that. There we go. So now we have our wheel cylinder installed. I'm not gonna try to wrestle these big monster springs on here until I get it back on. So we're gonna put this back on, and it takes two people to do it. All it does is it slides on just like this and it bolts through there. Uh, and then uh, we'll go through and put the hub on next. But so far, so good. I haven't had tremendous amount of surprises other than the, other than the fact I haven't to spend an extra hundred bucks on wheel cylinders and bearings and all that kind of stuff. But when you got this apart, you might as well go ahead and do it now instead of when you're on the side of the road and you gotta burn out. It burns the axle, basically is what it does if you, if you burn it up, so. Anyway, we're gonna put this shield on and we're back in a second. Okay, so we're gonna put these cockamamie springs back on. These things are not easy to get back in place. Remember to put your little flange back on right here. And then you'll take one at a time. This one went on first. I took a picture of it, that was smart. And we're gonna, there, just like that. That's what you call being a hoss, guys. And then we'll take the other one. Let's see if I can do it again. I may have just used all my energy up. Ugh. All right, I took a little break here. One more time. Here we go. Got it. Make sure they're good and seated. And they are. So we are good to go. Put this back on here like this, actually. Always grease this thing really good. Let me get... Put a little bit of grease all over this. I say a little bit. Be liberal about it. Of course, we're going to pump the bearing buddies full whenever we're done. Okay. So now, we slathered around this whole thing. Make sure you get where the seal goes really good. So the lip does not wear out. Just like that. Grab the brake drum. And you feel, you'll feel that new lip go and suck into place. And we'll get the other bearing. Okay. Once again, we're gonna some grease in there, put in our bearing. Now here comes the tricky part. Um, you gotta set the load right, or I don't know if you really wanna call it load or not. But whenever you put this on, which is your carriage nut, you wanna put it on just tight enough. You wanna make sure that you don't have any play in and out. That tells you that you got it on right. And then I'll go get a cotter pin. And you 
slip it through. And then you take the bottom of it. bend them out and what that does is it keeps the nut from backing off because it's not tight you just don't want it to back off anymore so now we're good to go so I'm not going to put the bearing buddies on just yet uh, because we're going to replace the front coupler and bleed this thing out and I'm not sure if the uh, the shoes are adjusted properly so we just want to make sure that everything's okay before we put this all back together and pump those bearing buddies full of grease. So, back in a minute.